Hey everybody, welcome to Wednesday Stash. Um, Debbie, Debbie here. Um, Wednesday Stash is where we um, uh, share ways that you can keep your food for longer. So today's Wednesday Stash, I'm going to talk about pectin. And what is pectin? What do you do with it? So um, I have a bunch of notes here because I want to make sure you get all the information um, and I don't leave anything out. So with pectin, I should have grabbed a jar of jelly or something so that you could see it. But um, for proper texture, uh, jellied fruit products require the right combination of fruit, uh, acid, um, pectin, and in this one, and sugar, I have the sugar right here. So um, now what happens is the fruit, you know, if you're making, you know, strawberry preserves or if you're making grape jelly, you know, you know what strawberries taste like, you know what grapes taste like. That's what the fruit does. The fruit uh, lends the flavor. Um, so, and but then it also gives the color and then also the liquid that's necessary in order to dissolve all those ingredients together. That's what your fruit does. Um, and the um, and the fruit also can supply some or all of your pectin, so it's going to depend. Um, but what is pectin? Um, pectin is a starch. It occurs naturally. It's in the cells of the of of the fruit, and it it's what lends the structure to the um, to the cell wall of the fruit. Well, it's in vegetables also, but it lends a structure to the cell walls. Um, and then when you combine that pectin, you know, in the fruit with sugar, and I'm not giving a particular brand, just that's what I have here, um, with the, the sugar and um, the acid, the acid is also in the fruit, but sometimes for certain recipes, you have to add acid to it. And usually we add that in the form of lemon juice. So, um, you you have your your fruit you have your sugar um, and you have your acid and in the right combination you get a gel and you think about the consistency of jams or jellies you know that's that's what you're going for but it's a, a particular formula that you need in order for that to um, happen for a gel to um, to form now all fruits contain pectin um, Apples, plums, and grapes usually have a na enough natural pectin that you don't have to add additional pectin um, uh, in order to make your jam jelly or your sweet spread, your different sweet spreads. Strawberries, cherries, and blueberries do not contain enough of their own, so you're either going to combine those, um, food, those fruits with a higher pectin fruit or you're going to add pectin to it. Fully ripened fruit has less pectin than slightly immature fruit. So if you have fully, you know, you know, it's it's good to you, perfect for you to go ahead and eat. If you have fully ripened fruit, then you want to one quarter of the total amount of fruit that you're using to make um, your sweet spread. You want uh, one fourth of it to be slightly immature because slightly immature fruit is going to have more pectin than your fully um, mature fruit. Um, so you want to make sure that that pectin's there again for that gel formation. Now you can test, and that's what we're going to do a little experiment, excited about doing this. You can te test the amount of pectin um, in fruit by adding one tablespoon of cooked and cooled fruit. You can make your own juice, like say if you're making um, your own jelly and you want to make the juice yourself. So what I did was um, I went and got some pears off of the back of, you know, out the backyard, um, and I made pear juice yesterday. And um, when you're making the, when you're making juice, when you're extracting juice uh, for fruit, excuse me, ex extracting juice from your fruit for making um, jellies, there's a particular way, so I'll put the link in there how you can extract juice. Now, if you have super, super juicy fruit, you don't have to, you know, cook it. You can, you know, press that out. But pears, pears are hard. So with your harder fruits, you're going, going to have to um, cook it for a little bit in order to ex uh, extract and strain the juice off. So that's what I did here. 
So for this to test to see if there's enough pectin in, um, in, in this juice, you're going to take a tablespoon of cooked, cooled fruit juice. So this was my pear juice, um, you know, that I extracted and it's cooled. And then you're gonna add it to one tablespoon of um, rubbing alcohol, 70% denatured alcohol. Um, this stuff is, you, you see, this is about all the alcohol we have left in the house. It's kind of hard to come by, but I'm, for the sake of science, I'll spare a tablespoon of alcohol. So what we're gonna do is, you get a tablespoon of your juice. I'll do the alcohol first. Now, remember, you don't taste this. Um, rubbing alcohol is poisonous, so you never taste or drink rubbing alcohol. So for this one, we're just gonna do it for the experiment. Then we're going to clean everything up, you know, wash it well and clean it up. So what you're looking to happen, we have a tablespoon of juice. So when you add, add it in, you stir slightly for, to mix and it says um, juices rich in pectin will form a solid jelly-like mass. Juices low in pectin will form small particles of jelly-like material. So I'm mixing and I'm not seeing anything happen here. Oh yes, I do. Yes, I do. I, I, oh, there's. I don't know if you can see that on the cat on the camera, but yes, I do see. You see little things foiling, but we do not have a jelly-like mass. It's getting thicker, and I can see little pieces forming in there. And like I said, you can't see that on the camera. Yeah, but it's there. It's thickening a little bit, but it's not a jelly-sized mass. So if I decide that I want to make pear jelly from my pears out back, um, I'm going to need, yeah, I just have little, there's little tiny, little tiny things that have formed. That's the best way I can describe it. And uh, what did they call it? They said, um, add it. Juices low in pectin will form small particles of jelly-like material. And I guess that's what you would call it because that's what you can see in here. You can see little tiny particles that have formed. So for mine, for my test, I would know I need pectin, pectin in order to make my, make jelly. So that's good to know. Not enough pectin in my pears. All right. So put cat back on that juice. All right, so if you have to add pectin, where do you get pectin from? Um, well, commercial pectin um, is needed, you know, like this for low, low, um, for low pectin fruit. Um, also, I just wanted to point out, sometimes um, you might have a fruit that's higher in pectin and you could take the chances um, of going ahead and making it, but some people don't want that to take that chance. They want that assurance that they're going, if they're going to go through all the trouble of making um, a sweet spread, they want that gel to have formed, so they're going to add uh, pectin uh, to it. So if you want, if you have a low um, pectin fruit, or if you want to make sure you're going to get a gel, go ahead and use commercial gels. So there are two types of varieties, okay? So basically you have two camps. You have liquid pectin, all right, so this is a pouch of liquid, liquid pectin, and there you have a, pow, a pack of powdered pectin, okay? So these are your two types of pectin. But with these two varieties, you know, these two types, there are a lot of varieties, mainly with this one, with the dry pectin. Um, Liquid pectin only comes in um, regular, it's regular classic pectin. And basically what they did was, um, it's dry pectin that they have already mixed for you, liquefied for you, to avoid clumping. A big difference between the two, this does not, the, the liquid pectin doesn't last long. So you need to check 
the expiration date. The expiration date on this is October 2021. Make sure you check those dates on your pou pouches because this just doesn't last as long as the powder pectin, okay? Um, because they dissolved it for you. Now, another difference between the two, um, uh, between your powder pectin and your liquid pectin, I wanna make sure that I get this straight. That's why I kept my notes. Um, for your for your powdered pectin, this is usually made from citrus fruits, okay? But for your liquid pe pectin, it's usually made from apples. So if you think about, um, you know, when you're doing that, different pectins react differently. Um, these two are not interchangeable. You know, it, it's not a case of, oh, um, I wanna use liquid pectin this time. Oh, I wanna use powdered pectin uh, this time. For your tested recipes, if it calls for you um, adding pectin, use the type of pectin that's specified in your recipe because they behave differently, they act differently, okay? So, um, like I said, this one only comes in one variety. Um, it's been dissolved for you uh, to prevent clumping. Um, this one is also the most expensive, okay? Um, um, the liquid pectin is gonna cost more than your dry pectin. Uh, for this one, you're going to go by your, your date. Generally, you want to use it within a year. Now, if it's an open pouch, if you've already opened the pouch, the pouch lasts for, let's see, um, for, for storage, your liquid pectin can be stored unopened for up to a year. You know, make sure you check that sell-by date. Um, but once opened, um, not sell by date, you, you um, check that quality date. But once opened, it can be stored in the refrigerator for up to a month, okay? Can't be left out, whereas you can open the powdered pectin. If you don't use all of it, you can close it back up. But for this one, you can keep it for up to a month. Just close it up really well, um, you know, and set it where it can, you know, stand up. It's not going to leak out and um, make sure that you use it. Um, for your powdered pectin, though, there are lots of varieties with your powdered pectin. So for this, this is classic. This is just your regular, plain, premium fruit uh, pectin. So for this one, you're gonna use it with ripe fruit. You're going to use sugar and not cut back on your sugar because you're, you know, one of the properties that sugar does, um, you need it in order to form the gel. You know, it has to be the right proportion of sugar, pectin, you know, um, your fruit, that's gonna have the uh, amount of, uh, correct amount of acid or if you have to add acid to it. Um, but you wanna make sure that uh, for your regular ones, don't, don't fudge with the recipe or you're not gonna get a gel. You're gonna wind up with a syrup. And you might have something that's not, you know, depending on what you're preserving or how you want to store it. Um, if you wanna can it, you really need to follow the recipe because the sugar acts as your preservative. Um, and you wanna measure accur accurately. You don't wanna double you know, when you're, when you're making jams and jellies, don't double batch things because your recipe doesn't uh, behave the, you know, you would think, okay, well, if it calls for one cup of this, you know, I'll do two cups and double everything else. That doesn't always work. So always work in batches. Um, you wanna follow your, your cooking instructions. Now for this one, um, when you're using the short, uh, the, the classic pectin, yes, it can be, the food can be canned in a boiling water canner. This is the recipe that's um, appropriate for it. And you want to make sure that you do half pint, um, you wanna use half pint or you wanna use pint jars. And I have a couple, I'll grab them for you. These are classic jelly jars, um, you know, but this is gonna be your pint size jelly jar. And this is like a fancy half pint jelly, jelly jar. The reason that you don't want to make jellies in larger jars, they might not cool fast enough to set. If you have a really jar, large jar, it, it's just, it, 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 it's not going to um, form the gel because it's just taking too long to cool down. So you stick with making your jams and jellies, follow those, the recipe. The recipe will tell you half pint or pint and it will tell you also the processing time. So stick with that, okay? Um, and then also, do not allow, when you're making your sweet spreads, don't let it cool first, 
because you know, like I said, that pectin is the pectin is is in um, acting with the acid. It's acting with the sugar, and it's going to form that gel. So as soon as you're you've completed cooking, you know, if you're doing a cooking one that you're going to can, as soon as you're finished doing that, go ahead and get it ladled into the jars before it starts cooling. Okay, you don't want to interfere with that gel process. Now, other um, powdered pectin, you know, there's different, uh, different brands. So all of the brands are going to work. You might have a favorite one, but, you know, there's Sure Gel, there's MCP, there's Mrs. Wages, there's Ball. Um, so just the, 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 the most important thing is to follow the directions. Now, for your liquid uh, pectin, like I said, the biggest thing with your liquid pectin is to uh, make sure that you follow the dates that's on the um the the packaging date but your liquid pectin is great you can use it for cooked or you can use it for your freezer um um free like say for freezer jam that will work um well also um and let's see now you can get into there are low i didn't get have it uh, find boxes of it because the stores are pretty much wiped out so i don't have an example to show you i could not find an example of a low or no sugar pectin but with the low or no sugar pectins um there uh, can be used for um depending on you might have specific uh, special pectins for it make sure you watch you read the directions and follow it um some can be used for your cooked jams and jellies and they can be canned so but you what you have to follow the your directions and for those it's usually your low sugar not your sugar free it's going to be for your low sugar um, pectins um, now it can be sweetened with regular sugar fructose or artificial sweeteners um, but with some of the um, special ones they don't freeze well so there are pectins that are specifically you have the no cook variety that is specifically designed for you to do freezer jams for that type of pectin, no, you can't, you, you don't cook with it and you don't can anything with those. So that, again, that's why it should be um, followed, you know, followed special, you know, specifically according to the manufacturers. Also with your, the, the special pectins, you don't use them for um, low acid preserves. So if you're doing, you know, something like um, jalapeno or, um, you know, zucchini, you know, like you're, you're acidifying it, you're going to make a gel, you might be doing a pepper jelly or something, the low sugar one uh, pectins aren't designed for those, they're not, um, the, the, follow the directions, it will specify how you can use, um, how you can use them. And keep in mind, when you use a low um, sugar pectin, the shelf life is not going to be as long as with the classic, when you're using sugar, pectin, um, the fruit, you get a, a long uh, shelf life from that. Um, let's see. Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to share with you. Um, oh, when you're using these low or no sugar uh, recipes, a lot of times what they're doing is um, for some of them, well, for, for all of them, in order to get something that's like a gel, it's not a true gel because a true gel is going to be a combination of the pectin, the sugar, um, the acid. Um, because if, if you reduce the amount of sugar and that's what you're doing with your low one, you have to have something to replace it. So a lot of them, what they'll use is like, this is gelatin. So what, what the gelatin will do is it'll give you a gel like consistency, but it's not a true gel, but because you're using gelatin, you can't, depending on which type you're using, um, you may not be able to can those. So that would be the type that have to be, that's the, the refrigerator. That's when you get into refrigerator jams and jellies because they're not safe to can. Um, so you want to keep that in mind. There are other thickener, thickeners that have, the, you know, like guar gum. And again, what you're doing is you, you're, you, because it's low sugar, you might, be, uh, might decide that you want to use an artificial sweetener. Artificial sweetener is not going to lend any thickening to it. You're using one of these products to give you something that, that, that seems like a gel um, that, you know, gives you that gel-like uh, quality. Uh, some people also cook the fruit. If you keep continuing to cook the fruit down, you can, you're not, it's not going to be a gel. It's just that it's going to be thick. You think about a butter, 
if you're making your fruit purees, your fruit butters, what you've done is you're cooking it down, you're um, um, getting all of the water, you're, de you know, you're, you're um, evaporating the water off of it and you're concentrating the fruit. That will give you a sweeter taste and it will also give you um, a thicker consistency. And some people do that in order to um, reduce uh, the amount of sugar or eliminate the, the, the sugar that they're, they're putting into it. But again, like I said, those aren't the type of things that you can, um, that you can, depending on what it is and what you've, the ingredients that you've added, you may not be able to can it for shelf stability. You just keep it in the refrigerator. Some of them freeze well as, um, freeze well also. But that's why you want to follow a tested recipe because a tested recipe, it's been tested. It, 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 it says, okay, if you follow these steps, it, it will be safe to eat, but it will also be of high quality. And that's one of the nice things about um, following tested recipes. When you experiment, sometimes it turns out well, and sometimes it doesn't turn out so well. So you want to make sure that not only is it safe, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it, it, it's of high quality also. Um, now, um, I'm going to drop uh, a pectin fact sheet. This one's really, really nice. Um, I have a pectin fact sheet. It has all of the different pectins listed on on the on this sheet, along with the manufacturer and the manufacturer's telephone numbers. Um, this came from Oregon State um, University Extension Service. So I'll give them a, a shout out. I thought this was a really really nice publication that they put together. Um, now whether or not you can find these pectins, they some of them might be uh, regional. Um, I have seen a few of them in the store in the past, but right now I'm not finding. Uh, the only thing I've been able to find is one brand of pectin um, in the supermarket. But with this sheet, you'll have all of the different ones that um, that are available. So I'll drop that into the the um, the comments. Um, Julie says, Debbie, are you familiar with Pomona's Universal Pectin? I've not used it, but I have seen it, and I wanted to grab. Uh, a, a box, but like I said, Julie, I don't know. Maybe in your neck of the woods, you can find it here. I have not been able. I've been able to find one brand of of both the same brand for liquid and for uh, powdered pectin, and I haven't seen any other variety. Um, let's see. Oh, Natalie said the suspense is killing her. Um, Natalie, I did the experiment, and what we did, I added the one tablespoon of alcohol to the um to the pear juice i had my pear juice here that i made you know that i cooked up yesterday and i added the one tablespoon of alcohol to it and i did not get the jelly like mass i got the little i can't you can't really see it on the camera at all but there's like little jelly tiny little jelly beads that have formed so basically the result of this experiment is if i would like to make jelly with my pears i'm going to have to add pectin now i will say these my pears were not ready you know um, um pear season in north carolina runs from august through october so it's not august yet it's super hot still i knew when i was picking pears that i, I just got the ones that were hanging the lowest they were just really easy to get to um, but I knew when I was picking pears, they were immature. Some of them were kind of big, but they were still hard as rocks. Now, I never get soft pears, the type of variety I have, the type of pear tree I have, they are cooking pears. They're not the eating pears. Um, and I use them uh, to cook. Usually I make um, I, dehydrating, they're wonderful, and making pear, uh, I, I'll, 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 I'll make um, like a pear fruit puree, puree with them, cook them down with uh in in the crock pot and that comes out really nice as well but the majority of the time we just get the pears we slice them and we we put them in the dehydrator because they're really really great for dehydrating um but if i decide to make jelly it's i'm gonna have to add pectin um so that's not gonna work so i experimented uh, to tell you the truth, I kind of thought this is what was going to happen. I didn't even, actually, I wasn't even expecting to get the little BBs like that. I really wasn't. So, obviously, there's more pectin in here than I thought, but not enough to make a gel. So, that was that. All right. So, now you know about pectin, 
but do you know your sweet spreads? So for next Wednesday, uh, Wednesday stash, I'm going to go through, I will explain what a jelly, a jam, preserve, conserve, marmalade, and butter. I will explain, they, they're all different things. I know a lot of times you just hear it, everybody calls them, it's just jelly. Well, it's more than just jelly. They all have a different, and then syrups are in there, uh, uh, syrups are in there also. But I'm gonna go through the sweet spreads because you don't spread a syrup, you pour a syrup. I'm gonna go through all of the spreadables with you uh, for next Wednesday stash. So thanks for joining me and I look forward to um, seeing you next week. Have a wonderful uh, rest of the week and take care. Oh, I see one. Did the juice gel anymore? No, <laughs> the juice did not gel anymore. It was a fail. Bye, everybody.